This video tutorial will show you how you can use a graphing calculator to explore and better understand quadratic equations. A quadratic equation is in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus z. The a, b, and c are what we call coefficients, and the three pieces are called terms. Okay, now let's bring up the most basic quadratic equation that there is and that would be x squared. We're not even going to put in the second and third terms. What makes it a quadratic equation is the fact that we have a term where the variable is squared. And there it is. It's a u-shape, which means it's, uh, it's not a linear equation. It's not straight like a line. Now I'm going to uh, hide that because we don't need it. And now we can use the graphing calculator to explore what happens when we play around with this first term. Suppose we want to add something to it, like 3. We see that it moves up 3 units. And let me adjust the axis. And if we move it up 5, it goes up 5 units. And if we add a negative number, like negative 2, we see that it goes below the x-axis and the vertex is at the position y equals negative 2. Okay, now let's explore and see what happens to the, the position and the shape of this curve when we change around the coefficient in front of x squared. We can change it to um, a number like 3 and see what happens. It looks like it gets more narrow. Well, the higher the number, I'm going to change 3 to 6, the more narrow it gets. Here I can even change it to 100, and it is very narrow. How about if the number in front of the x squared is a fraction, like for example, 1 fourth? we see that the graph gets wider. And the smaller we make this value from 1 fourth to, for example, 1 eighth, the wider it gets. In fact, if we make it 1 one hundredth, it almost looks like it's flat. Not quite, though. Okay, so we've seen whole numbers and fractions. How about if we have a negative sign in front, we notice that our graph opens downward, and the vertex is a maximum. And if we put a number in front of the coefficient, which is negative, we see the co it correspondingly gets narrower, like negative 4 or negative 8, even more narrow. Negative fractions are completely doable. One fourth, negative one fourth. It's still opening downward, but it's much wider. Now we're going to take a look at how the graph changes when we change all three coefficients. And we can do this by using sliders. Up here, we can adjust the slider to change the coefficient a. Down here, we can use the slider to change coefficient b. And over in the corner, we can change coefficient c. Coefficient c is 0. And we see that the vertex of the graph is right on the x-axis at y equals 0. When we move it up, we see that the graph moves up. And almost out of view. Here we can move it down, and when the value of c is negative, we see that it is below the x-axis. Okay, I'm going to set it back to 0. Here, the value of a is now 1, but when we make it larger, we see that the graph is getting more and more narrow as the number increases. And when it is negative, it opens downward, 
and we see that we have the Brownie face quadratic equation because the coefficient a is negative. Now, what happens if a is zero? It appears that the graph is completely gone, but in fact, it's still there. If we adjust the c value, it's a straight line. c equals three, two, one, and negative numbers. But at this point, in reality, it's not a quadratic equation anymore if the coefficient in front of a is zero. It has to be something besides zero. Okay, now what does that term do? Let's change around the coefficient b. Here it's 1, and we see that it's going into quadrant 3. The higher value, the deeper it gets, and to the left. And when we change the coefficient b to a negative number, it slides down and to the right. Notice, however, that if a is 1 and b and the value c is 0, the graph will still intersect the origin at 0, 0. Another thing that most graphing calculators are really good at is showing an equation in multiple forms. Now, we can see the equation in the form of a graph plotted out, but it's also useful to see the values in a table. And here we have values for x, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, and these are the corresponding y values. When we put it through the equation 3 times x squared, we see here that uh, when we substitute in a 1 for x, we square it and multiply it by 3, we get 3. When we substitute a 2 in for x, square it, we get 4, multiply it by 3, and we get 12. We can go as high as you desire, and negative numbers are present as well. We can change the resolution, so to speak. The step in which we see the values of x change from 1 to, for example, 1 tenth. One final useful activity that I believe exists only on this calculator is the ability to manipulate the function itself. Here, when I select function, we can see how the value in front of x changes. As I make it wider, the coefficient in front of x is a real number. It is a fraction. And when I make it more narrow, we see that the value is greater than 1. And when I move the graph around, we can see how the middle term changes and the C term.